Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about the uh, Humble N-Channel MOSFET. So here you see one in real life that is the IRF uh, 640. Um, it's uh, in this uh, TO220 package. That's pretty common for MOSFETs. Uh, usually to identify them they have the prefix IRF um, on them. So 640 is a pretty common one. This is what the uh, schematic diagram for a MOSFET looks like. Uh, technically, this um, reverse diode uh, isn't actually in the MOSFET. It's just an effect of the silicon. It's, it's not actually done on purpose, but um, it's there, and there's certain situations, which I'm not going to talk about now, um, which should be accounted for. And this is, for my specific, if you happen to have an RF640 MOSFET as well, you have its uh, pins are the gate, drain, and source. Okay, so you can see that you can you can think of an end channel as sort of being the MOSFET equivalent to a uh, PNP, uh, sorry, an NPN trans, the letters on the side, so NPN and then PNP for P channel. So that's sort of how you can think of it. So basically, the way it works, is it works the same as a um, bipolar junction transistor, as an NPN transistor, in that a signal on the um, base or in, in the MOSFETs gate the gate will make a connection between the um, collector and the emitter or in this case the drain and the source as they're called. So this may be confusing initially because you think the drain should be where current drains out of you. You think of it this way um, is that the, the actual current flow. So if you can, a good way to remember this is that current flow actually goes from negative to positive. So you can think the source, the source pin is negative and the um, drain pin and drains out of the drain pin or positive. Or you can think current drains into the drain pin, conventional current. Okay, so um, and that's how it works. But the main difference between MOSFETs and BJTs, BJT being a bipolar junction transistor, um, is that on a bipolar junction transistor, the uh, base, uh, which is the gate's sort of functional equivalent, is controlled by a current. So that's why always you see a current limiting resistor. Now, in the MOSFETs case, the gate is controlled by a voltage, not a current. And this leads itself to some um, applications that are nice. And as well as when it's connected, the drain source has a very low um, resistance when it's fully connected of about point, I want to say 1.8 ohms. So that's pretty low. So um, also MOSFETs can dissipate tons of power. They're, they're very powerful. Like the max for this one is 125 watts for this one. I mean, it's clearly, you know, for this um, size... For a TO220 package, you're going to need a heatsink, but the fact that one device can handle 125 watts max is pretty ridiculous. So here's the way you're going to set it up if you want to use it sort of basically, is that you have your MOSFET here, you have the um, positive voltage connected through some sort of load that you want to control, connected to the drain pin, and then you have the source pin connected to ground. So it's sort of like a grounded emitter configuration in an NPN, uh, very similar. So... Um, how does this work? Like we said, the gate is controlled by a voltage. So there's something called a gate threshold, which for this case, I, I'm going to be basically all these specifications I'm going to be highlighting are for this specific MOSFET. So if you want to know the ones for your MOSFET, in case it's not this one, you're going to have to look them up in the data sheet. Um, so you should sort of be, be aware of that, is that these specs are probably going to be similar to your MOSFET, but not exact. So you should um, keep in mind the theories behind this, but not necessarily memorize these specs. So basically, in my case, the gate threshold is 2 to 4 volts. And so what is a gate threshold? That's basically the voltage level needed for the gate to turn on. So by turn on, we need to have some sort of connection between the drain and the source. So that means that at a minimum, we need a minimum of 2 to 4 volts, and you're going to have to characterize this for each individual MOSFET. So basically, there's two types of uh, things, or three types, really, that we're going to be talking about when you talk about MOSFETs. You talk about the gate source voltage which is the voltage between the gate and the source, and since the source is going to be grounded in this case, it's just going to be the voltage at the gate. We talk about the drain source voltage, which is going to be the voltage at the drain and the source, So, and since the source is grounded, it's just going to be the voltage, um, your positive voltage that you have. Okay, and then we're going to talk about the drain current, and since um, right here you can see you have your load and the MOSFET are in series, since series current is the same, the current flowing through the drain is the same as the current flowing out of the source, which is the same as the current flowing into the load, which is the same as the current flowing out of the load. So you can use any of those. So how are these sort of related, okay? So um, there, there's a graph, and you should really look at us, uh, this up, but I've uh, sort of handwritten out a few of these that we can sort of use in our example. So here we have on this left column the drain source voltage, so that's the voltage, that's the positive voltage here. We have the gate source voltage in the middle, which is the voltage at the gate, because remember the source is grounded. And then we have the drain current, which is just the current 
flowing through this entire um, stack here, because remember, series current is the same. So when the uh, drain source voltage is 1 volt, which is very low, and the gate source voltage is 4.5 volts. Now, if you remember, we said the threshold for that, for the gate source voltage is 4 volts, so we know that the transistor is going to be on. Um, it's going to have a maximum current of about 550 milliamps, all right? So that's... Um, that's, that's the current that's going to flow. It can, less current can flow, but no more current than 550 milliamps can flow. Now, keep in mind, these figures are sort of rough. So the um, drain source voltage is, uh, when it's 10 volts and 4.5 volts gate source voltage, a max of about 600 milliamps. So these, these graphs are all logarithmic. Um, so we'll go, we'll say 10 volts, you know, and 5 volts. And you can see very quickly here that at 10 volts um, drain source voltage, 5.5 volts gate source voltage, you can get 5 amps of current flowing through. So that's, that's quite a bit, as you can see here. For 8 volts, which, which is going to be the example we're using, um, we're going to have, and for a 4.5 volt, you know, this is, so when the, volt, the drain source voltage is constantly 8 volts, in our case it's going to be 8.2, but it's going to be, you know, our results aren't going to be super accurate, so 8's close enough. With a um, gate source voltage of 4.5 volts, we're going to get a max of 600 milliamps. 5 volts, we're going to get a max of 1.5 amps, and 5.5 volts, a max of 4 amps. And um, so as you can see, we're going to be able to have a lot of current flow through this thing. So basically, what you need to take away from the MOSFET um, from this video about n-channel MOSFETs is that they're sort of um, voltage controlled. The gate is controlled by a voltage, not a current, so there's no current limiting resistor needed, and um, very, very little current will flow through the gate. You can look up the, the quiescent current for the gate. Uh, I don't remember what it is in, in the case of the RF640. Uh, however, it's very low, so um, uh, you don't really need to worry about that. But basically, by changing the uh, current on the gate, you can change the maximum amount of current allowed to flow um, from the drain through the source. So um, they're, they're, they're voltage controlled, basically, instead of current controlled. So here it is. Um, I'm not quite sure what uh, voltage, the what drain source voltage this is at. Um, but in the data sheet, it listed a, um, oh, here, uh, for basically up to 40 volts. So this chart is only accurate to 40 volts. Um, this sort of illustrates the uh, voltage thing I was talking about. Basically for a, um, here, let's see if I can get this in the frame. Um, for a maximum up to 40 volts, if I have a 4.5 volt gate source voltage, regardless of the uh, drain source voltage, the most current that can flow is 600 milliamps. Okay, these, these figures aren't going to be super exact, uh, and these scales are logarithmic, so the lines can get close together, but um, it's, it's going to be approximate. So for a voltage up, any voltage up to 40 volts, with a gate source voltage of 5 volts, the maximum current that could possibly flow, regardless on the, of the voltage, whether it could be you know half a volt or 40 volt, the max current that could possibly flow is going to be half, uh, one and a half amps. So if we jump up to eight, um, 8 volts gate source voltage here, the max current that could flow is 38 amps. Okay, and at 15 volts, uh, 80 to 90 amps. I couldn't really read the graph uh, properly to get any more exact than that. But this is 15 volts is higher than you really should be going on the gate source um, voltage. I, I would recommend only going up to a maximum of like seven. And if you need more than 38 amps, uh, you should probably just use dual MOSFETs um, connected in parallel. Because you can do that, because since the gate isn't controlled by current, um, you can put them, the two in parallel, completely in parallel. Anyway, so um, what's the experiment? We're going to do a little experiment here just to sort of prove this um, this chart that I just showed you here. We're going to be using this page um, where it's 8 volts. And basically, what I have here is I have an 8.2 ohm, uh, 8.25 ohm uh, resistor here. And I have this power supply set to roughly 8.2 volts. Again, it's not going to be exact, but it's going to be close enough. So, um... You know, don't expect the, these current figures to be exact, but that means that nominally, at, at maximum, there can be uh, one amp flowing through this, right? Because if we just short this resistor dead across the power supply, you know, 2 point, um, 8.2 volts and 8.2 uh, ohms is going to give us one amp, if you know your ohm's law. So um, that means that a maximum of one amp, so we should be able to um, tweak the gate source voltage to um, sort of to sort of limit the current is, is one way a MOSFET can be used. And I have this power supply back here. Uh, sorry, it's not in focus, but I have this hooked up to the gate. 
and like I said, I have this one hooked up through the through this through this multimeter for current, um, and then through the MOSFET, so we should be able to control. It. All right, so um, I'm going to turn everything on here. We're going to try 10 amps, and I'm going to see if I can get these meters together. Since this meter is so bad and it lost its uh, stand, it's difficult. But if we turn this on. And we turn this on, you see the power supply comes on, and um, as of now, since we have the voltage on the right, the, well, the one on the right is displaying voltage, and the one on the left is displaying the current through the, um, through the MOSFET and through the resistor, they're all the same thing. All right, so this is the, the one is the voltage on the right, um, the voltage of the gate, and the one on the left is the current. So you can see we have it now at two volts, and we still have no current flowing. Um, let me just make sure sometimes this, this gets disconnected. It's I, like I said, I don't recommend you buy one of these uh, cheap meters. So, um, let's see if I can get this right. So it's a two volt. So this was the absolute minimum listed. Um, so we can clearly see that it's not bad. If we turn it up to about two and a half, three volts, still nothing. So we can see that this one's going to be on the upper end of the spectrum. And now, if we turn it up to four volts, we're getting about 200 milliamps. But if you remember, our spec was at four and a half volts. Or, so we can try to turn it up there too. And now we have about 700 milliamps flowing at um, four and a half volts. So as you can see, we calculated a max of 600 milliamps. So, I mean, that's a 100 milliamp difference, but like I said, these are logarithmic, logarithmic graphs on a really small screen. I was just viewing it on my iPod uh, touch, so it's a small screen. And like I said, our, um, yeah, it's not gonna be totally exact. You got to keep in mind as well is that these MOSFETs are going to require some heat sinking at, at this um, higher power here. So for this case, I don't think it's necessary. Um, it's only, you know, I would say the MOSFET and the resistor are equally hot. We, I have a thermocouple, so I can test this later, but I need this multimeter here to use the thermocouple. Anyway, so we're bordering on, um, we're about 4.5 volts gate voltage and about 800 milliamps. So if we now turn this up to... Five volts. I would basically say that the error here is just basically error in reading the graph. So now you can see we're at about five volts and we're at um, 90 milliamps. Again, this multimeter is, is really, I, I don't trust it because um, it's like cheap and Chinese, so it, it may very well be closer to an amp. Um, geez, those things are, resistors getting a bit hot. Um, anyways, so this is pretty close to what we expect. Um, well, actually, we expect it. Anyways, you can see if I turn up the gate voltage here, is that it doesn't actually, you know, go beyond um, 900 um, milliamps here. So if we turn this voltage up a little bit, hit this up to uh, an amp. All right, so now we're at an amp, and we can, um, now we can, if we turn it all the way down, Here, one sec, I gotta... Okay, so we've turned it all the way down again. And now I'm turning it up. We're now at one volt and still no current. We needed about four volts last time, so we were on the upper end of the spectrum for this MOSFET. So, oh, three and a half volts, and we got about 10 milliamps. If we tune it to four, 13. See, if we get it to about four and a half, we're already at 900 milliamps. So, I mean, that's slightly more than four and a half. Let's see if I can get this exactly. It's going to be really hard to get this. Um, now we're at six volts, and oh, that's gone way beyond what we were. At five and a half volts, we were expecting a max of one and a half amps, so this should easily max out at five and a half volts. So you can see we go way below 5.5 volts. We hit about 5 volts before it starts um, dropping. Now we're at 4.5, and, and it's at um, 500. My power supply isn't the most instantaneous. Um, so if we turn it up here, we're at about 4 volts and 200 milliamps. So if we turn it up a little bit more. Now we're at um, 5 volts, and you know the limit for 5 volts is about 1.5 amps, so... Now we're at 3.7. Now we're at about 4.5. Let me just make sure. Yeah, 4.5 and, and 900 milliamps. So it seems our calculations were a little bit off. Um, 
but like I said, these are logarithmic graphs. So you can basically use the MOSFET as a, um, as a current limit, right? So it's limiting the current through this resistor now to eight, um, you know, see now we're, now we're hitting an amp uh, when we're at 10 volts and you can see, well, I don't know if you can see actually, it, it has to take the voltage all the way sweeping it, some sweeping it through, slowly through its range here. Um, it's going way down before it's going to go, um, the current's going to drop anymore. Because like we said, even at, at five and a half volts, at five and a half volts, it's allowing a max of four amps through. So um, it's going to have to hit, you know, somewhere around five volts. Um, so we're just passing through the five and a half volt mark now. Um, just hit five volts and it starts to go down a little bit. Now we're at four and a half volts and we're allowing about 600 milliamps in. Four volts, about 200. So as you can see, and then eventually it goes so low that no current flows. So that's that's the way a MOSFET works, is that it's that basically it's the same as a BJT, except it's, it's more like a current limiting device. So if you wanna control the amount of current, the voltage in, um, you can look up the graphs on your data sheet, and the voltage at the gate, uh, the, the gate source voltage, is going to be proportional to the drain current, okay? So, um, and if you want the MOSFET to just be either on or off, like you can have with a BJT, uh, you can just set it to like, you know, you can set the gate source voltage to something like eight volts, where like 38 amps can flow through, and it's gonna be really low, um, really low resistance. So that's what you can do if you want your MOSFET to sort of just conduct straight, act like a short. Um, otherwise, you can get it to act like a current, uh, current limit. Um, you can see many people use the MOSFETs um, like current limits. So um, just remember that these, and, and the advantage over these things over BJTs is that they, they use voltage to control their gate instead of um, current, so it's, it's slightly easier. You can get um, what's called a logic level MOSFET. I'm not sure if this one is technically logic level or not, but basically that means that at, at zero volts, so you, know, you can get 3.3 volt, usually five volt are common, in this case, this would be more of a five point, uh, five volt logic level MOSFET, excuse me. Uh, because when the, um, basically, when the gates, the, you can use a microcontroller and a MOSFET to control higher load things like motors or LEDs or light, light bulbs or, or something that you need to control that's higher power. So basically what you can use this MOSFET for is that um, a logic, if you use a mo logic level MOSFET, when you set the gate to zero volts, nothing is conducting. That's the same as a normal MOSFET. But when you set it to five volts, it's gonna, it's gonna conduct a lot of current. And in this case, at five volts, it can conduct a max of 1.5 amps. Or a logic level MOSFET, it may be able to conduct a max of like 20 amps um, because it's designed to work between the range of zero and five volts. Whereas this one has a max um, gate source voltage of like 15 volts, right? You don't, you don't really want to push it up at the 15 volt range, but you can. So um, that's, that's really the thing about MOSFETs is they use voltage at the gate um, to control the drain current. So you can go out there and build yourself some snazzy little current limits. Just remember when you look at the graphs, they are logarithmic and they can be tricky to read because they're so small and they're logarithmic. So especially up at the, you know, up when you're in the seven, eights and nines, the lines are really close together. Um, so you may not get super exact, so you're probably gonna have to do some measurements, but uh, go out and build yourself some current limits or control some really high power devices because these, these MOSFETs themselves can handle, like I said, 125 watts. So you can, you know, you can put like 50 volts on the um, gate and you can go, you know, an amp, easy. You know, you can, you can put 40 volts and technically go 80 amps, that, that definitely violates something, but you get, you get my point, you know, you can go 40 volts at five amps, boom, you know, that, that may violate the 125 watts, but you get, my, you get my point, is that you can dissipate lots of power in these things as long as you have the right size heat sink. So remember as well, you, you're gonna need to select, oh, my multimeter's timed out, you're gonna need to select a uh, good heat sink for it.